Hello everybody. Welcome to the final video for the Garden Archway Art Quilt. So today I'm going to bring you through finishing up this quilt with you, the smaller version. Last week we got to watch as I finished quilting the larger version with you. And this week we're focusing on doing the last parts of this quilt together. So when I was making this quilt, I noticed that one side <laughs> was a little crooked. So we're going to start off this week by straightening that up, just filling in some of that crooked missing space with some scraps left over from the fabrics used in this quilt. And then I'll bring you along as I layer the quilt back, batting and quilt top. We're going to add the tool on top and pin baste everything down. Then guess what? I did some gorgeous crosshatch quilting on this quilt. I can't wait for you to see it. So that's how I decided to finish this quilt with some crosshatch quilting. Crosshatching has always been one of my favorite quilting methods for finishing my quilts and I think it is lovely. It's also a great easy way to finish your quilt with the tool on top I did not stitch down not one of these pieces of applique. It's awesome. I can't wait for you to see it. So I'll show you how I do the crosshatch quilting with some painter's tape. Then we're going to make some binding and bind this quilt together. And then she is all done. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of today's video because I'm going to show you some close up views of each one of these quilts. I think you're going to enjoy that. And uh, yes, don't forget there's a link to the entire playlist so you can watch from the very beginning to today's video all in one place. Let's go ahead and get started. So let's take a look at my quilt. All the pieces have been put in. What I noticed about halfway through in making this quilt, the right side is a little off. It's a little crooked. So I want to go ahead and fix that, even though I might end up trimming some of this away when we square up our quilt in the end. I do want to straighten this up because to me, I can visually see the difference from the left side to the right. So I'm just going to take a straight edge ruler and a chalk marker and just draw a straight line straight down and take some of the scraps I have left over from this quilt and just fill in that space. You'll see the chalk line on the background fabric. I'm just cutting some scraps, fabrics that I've already used in this quilt, so it'll sort of just tie all in together. And I'm just gonna fill in some wonky stone pieces in this missing empty space, just to straighten this up a little bit. I have not backed this fabric with fusible. I am not using any freezer paper. I'm just cutting some fabric scraps and fitting them in. And once I fill in this section, you'll see here in just a minute, I'm going to take some glue and just glue baste these pieces down with just a small little dot of glue. At this point, I have moved all this quilt around and around and around. It's not getting moved around anymore. The glue is going to dry. And then we're going to make our quilt layers. So while the glue is drying, because I had gone in with some watercolor paints and ink tense pencils and shaded a lot of the fabrics on my quilt top, I'm going to go ahead and touch up the new fabric that I've added because it was sort of brighter than all the other pieces. And I really want these pieces that I've just added to blend in. So I'm just adding some shading here and there throughout my pieces. Once I'm done, I'm going to let this just sit and dry, make sure everything's nice and dry before I move to the next step. Now that my quilt top is nice and dry, we're going to create our quilt layers. Today I'm going to be using these basting pins. They sort of have a little bend in the bottom of the pin. This helps go through all of the layers of my quilt back up to the top and fasten the pin. So here's my pretty quilt back. 
I'm going to bring in my batting. You'll see I'm using scrap batting for the smaller version, so I have two pieces. I'm just going to lay them side by side and bring in my quilt top. Make sure everything is laying nice and flat. I'm going to bring in a great big piece of tool. This is the tool that I showed you in video number one. I'm going to lay it nice and flat and then just trim it a little bit bigger than my quilt top all the way around. Smooth it all out and now I can start pin basting all of my layers. I'm placing my pins about a hand's width apart from one, one another. And just making sure to go through all those layers and keep everything nice and flat. So this is going to take just a few minutes. We're going to skip forward. This is what the quilt looks like all pin basted. We're ready to do some quilting now. Look at all those pins. <laughs> so for this quilt, I want to do some cross hatching. To help stay nice and straight when I do cross hatching, I like to use some painter's tape. So I'm going to start by pulling off a piece of tape that's long enough to go from corner to corner. We're going to reuse this piece of tape over and over and over again. I'm just going to lay it from corner to corner. And my cross hatching will be, let's see, I think that's an inch wide tape. Bringing the quilt over to the sewing machine. I have my sewing machine set to a straight stitch. And the length I'm going with is a 3.0. I'm not using a walking foot. Uh, but you might find it helpful to use yours. To begin with, I'm going to stitch right next to that painter's tape on the left side of the painter's tape. And when I come to a pin, I'm just going to stop, remove the pin, and then keep stitching. So I'm not sewing through the tape. I'm sewing right next to the tape. From one side all the way to the other. Stopping when we get to a pin. <laughs> Once I get to the end, we can pull the quilt all the way back through. And I'm not moving the tape. I'm just going to shift where I'm sewing. Now I'll be sewing on the right side of the tape. My needle lowers right next to the tape. And we're going to do a straight stitch all the way from one side to the other. I love using the painter's tape. <laughs> it is just sticky enough to stay in place, but not so sticky that it's hard to remove once you need to move it to the next position. And you can reuse the same piece over and over and over again. And I like to use mine until it just doesn't stick anymore. And then I'll pull a new piece of tape and start using that. Now each time I sew a line, I'm sewing on the right side of the tape. And we're going to move from the middle of the quilt all the way to one side. And once that side is quilted, we'll flip everything around and start working towards the other corner. Look at those nice straight lines. <laughs> I love it. Now 
you can see at this point I'm just re repositioning the tape as I work my way from one side to the other. Still quilting right along. At this point I can already tell I'm going to love this quilting. <laughs> Still shifting the tape. I'm going to show you what this looks like really close up. Isn't that so pretty? I was almost tempted to stop right here with the quilting. <laughs> so I finished the other side and let me show you what the whole quilt looks like with the cross hatching. This is just a straight line going in one direction. Isn't that gorgeous? So you could stop right here if you wanted to. That is super pretty. From the back side, you can't see it so much, but all oh, in person, it is stunning. But we're gonna bring it over and quilt the opposite direction. So I've laid my tape out from corner to corner in the opposite direction. We're gonna bring it back to the sewing machine and stitch all of those lines in the diagonal the other way. So just like we did before, I'm starting on the left side of the tape. This time, there's no pins to remove. They were all removed during the first set of lines that we quilted. So I'm stitching on the left side. And once I'm done, I'll bring it right back up without removing the tape and stitch down the right side of the tape. Coming back and stitching in this direction just seems to go so much faster. And I guess it's because we don't have to stop and remove all of the basting pins. So all of these lines just seem to breeze right on by. <laughs> I have my music on and I'm just enjoying my time at the sewing machine. We're gonna stitch a few lines together then I think you get the idea, but I thought it would be fun to watch. Look how perfect the painter's tape really spaces out those lines and helps keep you nice and straight. Sometimes I mark my quilts with a chalk marker or like a disappearing pen. Uh, but yeah, I think I love this method. I don't have any marks to go through and remove when we're done. I'm going to go ahead and finish up the quilting off camera. And once I'm done, we're ready to go ahead and trim away all of the extra and square up our quilt. So here we are, y'all. I wish you could feel that. <laughs> and I wish you could see it in person. It is just gorgeous front and back with the cross hatching. So at this point, we're ready to go ahead and trim away all of the extra batting and backing and the foundation, the fabric foundation, and square up and trim everything nice and pretty. So being really honest, I'm just gonna take a straight edge ruler and just eyeball the bottom and give it a nice straight finish. And then once I've done that, I can use the bottom of the quilt and line that up to align on my cutting mat and straighten up the sides. Working my way up to the top of the quilt, making sure to keep everything nice and straight. Then 
the sides are trimmed, and then we can trim up the top. And now the quilt just seems so much smaller. <laughs> oh, but it is so pretty. Look at that. I love it. I love it. So because this is an art quilt, I think there's so many different ways that you could finish the quilt at this point. Sometimes with my art quilts, I do a locking stitch all the way around the edge or a really close zigzag stitch just to close off all of those raw edges all the way around. And that gives a nice and easy, quick and clean finish to my art quilts. Sometimes I face my quilts. For this one, I'm gonna go with a traditional binding. So for the quilts that we've done in this series, we have the smaller one and we have the larger one. So let me tell you how much binding fabric you need to do each one. For the full size version, you're gonna need half a yard of binding fabric. And for the smaller version, you're going to need a quarter yard of binding fabric. So I'm cutting my binding at two and a half inches wide. I'm just gonna use some extra quilt back material from a previous quilt and cut my binding strips. I have four strips, I'm gonna piece them together, fold over my binding in half and give that a press. For this quilt, I've decided to add my binding to the front of the quilt first. Sometimes I go back and forth, y'all. Sometimes I add it to the front first and flip it to the back. Sometimes I add it to the back and flip it over to the front. <laughs> For this quilt, I wanted a nice, smaller, clean finish on the front. So I decided to add my binding to the front and I'm just sewing all the way around, doing a mitered corner. all the way around my quilt. I'm using a little less than a quarter of an inch when attaching my binding because I want my binding to appear small on the front. And this will just give a nice small little frame around my entire quilt. When I'm done, I'm gonna glue base my binding to the back of the quilt Press that and dry it. It's gonna hold my binding nice and pretty in place on the back. And then I will do a stitch in the ditch from the front of the quilt. It'll sew down the binding on the back. Glue basting your binding. Oh, it is so helpful. My binding is perfect on this quilt and I love that. <laughs> So I really hope that this video was helpful for you. In this art quilt series, I really wanted you to see quilting the quilt in two different ways. So here you have the cross hatching. And then on the larger version, like we saw in the last video, I quilted around the stones. Certainly these are not the only two ways that you could quilt this quilt, right? but I wanted to do something different with each one to give a really great example. You could do your cross hatching straight across from left to right and up and down. That would be gorgeous too. I have seen some pictures and some people have sewn down each one of their pieces and they're all done. That was their quilting and they're not using the tool on top, and it is gorgeous. So, so many different things that you can do. So now that the binding is done, let's take a really good close-up view of this quilt. So up close, you get to see all of the really neat things about the pieces in this quilt, like the fabric with the posted stamps, the fabric with the writing in it. You get to see a lot of the little fuzzy bits of yarn, like 
the green moss that I added. You can see all the detail in the very first piece, the larger piece at the very bottom, all that yarn that we added. You can see all of that really close. You can see the shading from the ink tents and watercolor paints that I used. Like right here in this green tree, I added some ink tents, uh, pencils, and just added some pops of color to give some shading. You can see the fuzzy bits from the yarn that we cut in the sky area. So it's really fun to go up close and see all of the different elements that we added. Very minimal quilting with this quilt, but all of those pieces with the raw edge applique. Super, super simple and quick to do it this way. But what I love about this is when you step away, all of those elements just blend together and you really just see this picture that comes together of the archway. So this has been so much fun. I hope that even if you don't make it the archway quilt, that you've seen some techniques in this series that you can transition into your own design to make a quilt just like this one. So let's take one final view of this quilt. I think she is just gorgeous. She is so pretty. And now let's take a close up view of the larger version because on that one, I quilted around each one of the stones and then did a lot of free motion quilting through several of the stones with different, different quilting designs. This one I had a lot of fun adding bits of thread, uh, a lot more different yarns, some burlap flowers. You'll even see some sequins in there. Some sections I added some beads underneath of the tool. I did some pebble quilting, some meandering, some straight line quilting. some echo quilting and some of the stones. So up close, you get to see all of these different elements and the textures that they add. This was a lot of fun. See the sequins there? They're just underneath the tool. They do move around, <laughs> but you could sew them down if you wanted to. And I might do that. I might come back now that the quilts are finished and do some more elements on top, on top of the tool and add some beads or some sequins. See the little pieces of eyelash yarn right there? So up close you can really see that, but when you step away from the quilt, it all just blends together. I do think you can do this custom quilting on the larger version on your sit down sewing machine. It's just going to require some patience, okay? It's going to require taking some breaks and stepping away from it, but you can absolutely do quilting like this on your sit-down machine as well. So all of those little elements just disappear into the picture of the quilt. And let's take a final view of this picture. And then to finish up this series, let's take a look at the two quilts side by side so that you get a really great visual of the two different sizes, the larger version and the smaller version side by side. I've so much enjoyed my time with you in this series. I look forward to seeing your pictures. Make sure to jump over to the Creative Crew group and share so that we get to see your fabulous art quilt. Thanks for watching, everybody.
Bye.